Hello, welcome to Service Coordination Supports Autism Spectrum Disorder 2022-2023 Application Instructional Video. We hope this video will help you in better completing your application. ASD funding is intended to help access respite services for children with a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder under 18 years old. This funding is strictly to purchase respite supports and cannot be used towards therapies, equipment, and other support needs. Respite support can include camps, overnight respite, in-home respite, support by direct support workers, and recreational activities. Families must submit a new application each year for consideration. All questions in the application reflect the child's needs and the family situation at the time of the application. This information is then reviewed and used to help allocate the available funding. The amount of funding allocated to applicants will be determined by the amount of funding available each year as well as the number of applications we receive. It is important to note that the allocations are based on needs. Children and families who identify most in need will be served first with the available funding. We encourage families to apply each year as the needs in the community change and families may be allocated funding one year but perhaps not the next. Service coordination support acknowledges that the funding allocation is simply not sufficient to support the growing number of applicants each year. If you are not registered with service coordination support, we will require that you submit a psychological assessment confirming of a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder with your application to determine eligibility. Please call intake at 613-748-1788 to register with us. Please ensure that you complete all sections of the application form and check off the boxes that reflect your child's support needs or the challenges you experience. Frequency refers to how often your child needs support or how often they experience this challenge. If one does not apply to your situation, please check the Not Applicable box. To begin, please ensure to check off the box confirming that your child has been diagnosed with ASD. Next, under Child's Information, you will need to provide your child's name, gender, date of birth, and address. Similarly, under Family Caregiver, you will need to provide your name, address, if different from that of the applicant, individual requiring support, and specify your relationship to the child. If your child were to be allocated, 2022-2023 ASD funding, is the family caregiver who is completing the application the person who will be managing the funds? If so, please check off the Yes box. If the person who would manage the allocated funds is someone else, please check off the No box. You will need to provide the person's name, address, email, and telephone number. Needs and communication. In this following section, you will need to identify the level of support your child requires to communicate his wants and needs by checking off the appropriate box. The first option implies that your child can clearly communicate using full sentences or fluently express themselves 
using sign language? The second option indicates that your child has limited verbal communication and or poor nonverbal communication skills. They cannot make their thoughts, feelings, and needs known. Lastly, the final one suggests that your child is nonverbal. Need safety. Moving along to the section below, you will need to identify your child's level of safety awareness by checking the appropriate box. If you check off one of the boxes, you will need to indicate the frequency of that incident's and or behavior on the right of each example. For reference, throughout the rest of the application, you can keep in mind that hourly happens several times a day or more frequently. Weekly happens at least weekly, but not daily. Daily happens once or more a day, but not hourly. Monthly happens at least once a month, but not weekly. You would check off the box if your child lacks an age-appropriate sense of danger and does not fully comprehend the consequences of their actions. A few examples could include risk of elopement, touching hot surfaces, climbing on furniture, putting objects in mouth, ingesting toxic materials, talking to strangers, street safety, tendency to wander or run away from home, school, or out in the community. Need self-injury. Some children may harm him herself when attempting to communicate, experiencing pain or discomfort, expressing fear or anxiety, just to name a few. In this section, you will indicate if your child manifests any self-injurious behaviors, such as head banging, hair pulling, hitting, biting, pinching, scratching, etc. Need hyperactivity. In this section, you will identify if your child is in constant motion and manifests symptoms of hyperactivity, such as running, pacing, spinning, rocking, jumping, fidgeting, difficulty settling down, and or inability to stay on task. Need aggression. This section gives you the opportunity to identify aggressive behaviors that your child might manifest towards others. These behaviors may be intentional or not intentional. You would check off the box if your child hurt others by hitting, punching, kicking, biting, scratching, pinching, pulling hair, etc. Need tantrums. Some children may show intense reactions described as temper tantrums, meltdowns, or outbursts. They may happen at home, school, or in the community. If your child demonstrates these behaviors, please identify it by ticking off the box. Some examples of such behavior may range from screaming, crying, and stomping to refusing to cooperate and throwing themselves on the floor for an extended amount of time. Need personal care. This section will allow you to identify how much assistance your child requires with daily living and personal care needs. First, check the box that indicates your child's age at the top left of this section. Please consider your child's age and developmental milestone when completing this section. For example, a two-year-old child will always require support with bathing and toileting. If none apply to your situation, please check 
the not applicable box. When determining each areas of needs, you may ask yourself these following questions. Dressing. Does your child need assistance with dressing themselves? Does your child need help with buttons and zippers? Toileting. Is your child in diapers? Does your child need assistance or supervision when going to the bathroom? Does your child need help with wiping themselves? Feeding. Does your child need assistance to eat? Does your child need to be monitored due to risk of choking? Does your child need their food mashed or pureed? Bathing. Does your child need help with washing their hair and body? Does your child need constant supervision while in the bath or shower? Mobility. Does your child need a wheelchair or any other assistive mobility devices? Does your child have difficulties in gross motor ability? Does your child have challenges with walking? Personal hygiene. Does your child need help brushing their teeth? Does your child need assistance with washing hands? Does your child need help with brushing their hair? Need medical condition. Secondary diagnosis. In this section, please read carefully and identify your child's medical diagnosis by checking the appropriate box, boxes below. The diagnosis must have been confirmed by a doctor. If none apply, simply check off not applicable at the bottom of each section. Need. Additional information. This section will allow you to address any other challenges that have not yet been captured. Please check off any examples that align with your child's needs and behaviors. Has sleep issues. Sleep issues implies that your child may have problems falling and or staying asleep. It could also mean that your child may have difficulties waking up and or staying awake. You can also consider sleep disruptions such as sleepwalking, night terrors, and or any physiological condition that may affect your child's sleep. Follows a special diet. Your child may follow a special diet if he, she, has food allergies and intolerances. Additionally, extremely narrow food preferences may also fall under this category. Demonstrate sexualized behaviors. Your child may display inappropriate sexualized behaviors, such as inappropriate touching of others, masturbating in public, public nudity, discussion of sexual topics at inappropriate times. Extreme sensory issues affecting daily life. Sensory issues can encompass a wide range of stimuli. For example, your child may be oversensitive to certain sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and touch. Fecal smearing. There may be medical problems, sensory challenges, behavioral factors, or emotional reasons why some children may smear feces. Smearing covers a variety of behaviors such as taking feces out of the toilet, defecating in the bath, taking feces out of their diaper, underwear, etc. Loud vocalizations. When happy, some children with higher language abilities may script lines from movies, recite books out loud or repeat song lyrics. Some children with decreased language skills might hum, grunt, shriek and squeal. Behaviors that are disruptive to others. Some children may exhibit disruptive behaviors by refusing to follow rules, lack respect and behave in angry, resentful or vindictive ways towards others. This can include, but is not limited to, 
spitting at others, using vulgar and aggressive language. Other behaviors may also involve excessive argumentativeness and other forms of defiance or resistance to authority. These behaviors can be observed at home, at school, or in the community. Aggressive behaviors towards property. You would check off this box if your child destroys property, such as punching walls, breaking items, and throwing things, etc. Day support, day activity. Please check off the box that indicates your child's age at the top left of this section. Below, you will identify where your child spends the majority of his, her day during the week, Monday to Friday, by checking off the appropriate box. We recognize that school hours may not be full days. For the purpose of this application, regular school hours are identified as full day. Please note that you can check off more than one box to total one full school day. Please consider the following when checking off the appropriate box. If your child regularly attends school each day, enter a check mark in the full day column. If your child is of preschool age and is home by choice, enter a check mark in the full day column. If your child is of preschool age and is home because you are unable to locate a preschool nursery daycare because of your child's needs, enter a check mark in the less than half day support column. If your child is homeschooled by choice, enter a check mark in the full day column. If homeschooling is a result of not being able to attend school, suspension, breakdown of services, school refusal, etc., enter a check mark in the less than half day support column. If your child is participating in virtual learning due to the COVID situation, enter a check mark in the full day or less than half day support column, depending on your child's schedule. Caregiver information. This section is in regard to the parent caregiver and family situation. Please check the factors which apply to your situation. I am a single parent caregiver. You may check off this box if you are a single parent providing care with no support from the other parent. I am a senior parent caregiver. You may check off this box if you are 65 plus. I provide support to other family members who require care outside of the home. You may check off this box if you are caring for elderly parents or anyone else who lives outside of your home. I am a parent caregiver with challenges. You may check off this box if you have any mental health conditions, developmental disabilities, physical disabilities, mobility restrictions, medical diagnoses, etc. I have no or limited informal supports. You may check off this box if you have a limited support network. Informal supports can include neighbors, friends, and family members who do not live in the home, such as aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, etc. My employment is compromised due to level of care needs. The hours that caregiving demands can eventually have a negative effect on your work. You may check off this box if your caregiving role affects your responsibilities at work or if you are at risk of losing your employment due to needing to miss work due to your child's support needs. Check this box if you must provide support during the day to your child, children, due to their, your family's medical complex needs and risks directly associated to COVID, preventing them to attend school this year. Check the final box if you must provide support to other children in your home. Family situation. Please identify the number of people in your household who are diagnosed with a physical mobility limitation, medical health diagnosis, mental health diagnosis, a developmental disability, ASD, etc. Disclaimer. In this section, using the checkbox, please certify that all of the statements in the application are true to the best of your knowledge. 
SCS reserves the right to withhold ASD funding if the information in the application is proven misleading or fraudulent. We hope that this instructional video was helpful in helping you complete this application form. If you have any questions, please call our Children's Intake at 613-748-1788 and press 0 for information and support.